To begin imaging with the Vivid Eye, we're going to start over here on the left-hand side. We're going to click Patient to add a new patient on there. And it's going to give me a menu. Do I want to create a new patient or a new exam? See my existing patient list, end a current exam, or just exit if I made a mistake. Let's go ahead and create a new patient. And it's saying that I had those images stored from that previous video. Do I want to store them? I don't want to store any of them because they're not. Yes, I do want to delete that whole study. Yes. Okay. So right here, it has a list of patients, some previous patients. So you can select those patients from there where if you have a DICOM work list or someplace else, but typically you want local archive, internal hard drive. So we get to this screen, we can either search for a patient or create a new patient. So if I just want to search for a previous patient, I can just type it in and here I've got this previous, previous patient. Double click and it's bringing up that previous patient and starting a new exam. Now that's not really what I want to do here. I'm going to create a new patient And I'll just type in my some test information, test, and I can tab to the next and say Brian. And it'll ask me for a patient ID. Then I'm going to select my patient ID. I'm just going to go ABC123. And now I can go ahead and click Create Patient. There's also some more things here if you want to click on more. If you're searching for a patient, there's some ways that you can search born between when you created the exam, the physician, and then it'll get all the, all the people that way. But if you've typed in the information there, nothing will show up unless it's a previous patient. So I'm going to go ahead and create that patient, and I'm ready to begin scanning. Now, we've already been through all these buttons here, and so we'll just jump right into imaging. After we've done the patient, we want to select our application. It's going to say which probe, and go ahead and click 3SRS. So we have all of these settings here that if you go to the system setup, you can see how to add or remove these from the main menu. We're just, we have a standard adult cardiac and pediatric, and some of these are other ones. But you can also click more, which gives you a whole other set. So we have the stress, abdominal, fetal heart, etc. So I'm going to hit cancel. I can go to application, and then I'm just going to go ahead and select cardiac. It is set as the default application, and that's going to be what shows up. So on the imaging screen, we have this V, which is the probe orientation marker that relates to this little green dot right here. Your probe may show something different, but the other probe does not have one. This green dot is showing that that's how the probe is going to be. You can switch that by hitting left, right, up, down. You can change the view that way. And let's just now go down through these soft keys. We can adjust the width of our sector, change the frequency. And as I change the frequency, you'll see that it goes from octave to non-octave. And then it just shows me a single frequency, which is where it's sending and receiving. I'm at 3.6, which is the highest frequency that's available. And if I scroll down, it's now going from 2 to 4. And if you're familiar with harmonics, that's saying it's sending it to and receiving it 4 megahertz, which should theoretically give you a better image. If you're having trouble with penetration, you can always turn off that harmonics. We also have focal zones here. We can click up here and let's say dual focus. So I have two focal zones. I can also change my color, my gray maps and color maps right there. Turn that off, turn off the dual focus. And my focal position, which I can move up and down, as you see right here. So I'm going to get that width. Also, the, see how it says tilt down there? If I push tilt and then move back and forth, it will tilt that sector. Same thing with frame rate. If I click here for frame rate, whoops. If I click frame rate and it's highlighted, I can change the frame rate. And it will, the higher the frame rate, the more things it's going to adjust. So you're going to lose possibly some image quality with a higher frame rate. Lower frame rate will adjust multiple things that will trade your frame rate for image quality. Lower the frame rate, higher the image quality, higher the frame rate, lower the image quality. We also have compression here, which is going to give you a whole other set of image optimization tools. If you are curious as to what each one does, just select it, put an image on the screen, and go 
all the way up and all the way down and you can change them all just to see what you like best and if you like a certain image quality better than others you can make all these changes and then save a custom preset which is pretty easy so let's say I made all these changes and I like the image tilted a different frame rate and click on application click set and then click presets I can enter my new name for a preset I'm just gonna go ahead and type in test click save so now when I hit that application again it has test cardiac and that is the custom preset I made so each time you go to that all those settings that you made by yourself you can have that show up every single time you do an exam and later on we'll show you how to move that preset to the top or bottom in that menu whatever you'd like to do but we'll get to that in the system setup for sitting review just click freeze and you automatically have your cine loop and we discussed this before about how many frames it has and it, the amount of time that is in the loop if I unfreeze right now it's telling me how many seconds I have in the loop and this is the buffer filling across right here we're at 70 frames per second until this buffer fills up which before it was about 20 seconds that's when it'll start erasing the beginning so we know in general uh, if we're looking down here it'll tell me about how many seconds I have to go back into the senior review and if I want to go back I can just hit freeze and I can just scroll back through and this little red line tells me where I am on the ECG and this shows me about how far I am I'm, I'm at 14 seconds this is the frame count here I'm at frame 877 and this shows me if I have an ECG it'll show me the heartbeat you know from beat to beat and I can see that exactly through there so now I can also save that loop I want to go to the cine loop menu and if I only want to save a certain portion I can change this left marker move it to the left or to the right and the right marker and to do that I can save just a portion of this cine loop instead of the entire thing so that way it won't fill up my hard drive so if I just want to select this part and I want to save that cine loop I'm gonna hit the store key and that's going to actually save a loop and you can see it kind of looks like a film strip down there if I freeze again and just do with a single image and hit store it's only going to store a single image now that probably sounds kind of odd but if you want to say store a single image just hit the freeze key and then hit store if you want to save a loop you either have to play the cine loop pressing here and actually have it play and while it's playing you hit store then it will save the loop or you can also save a cine loop by pressing the store key in a live imaging mode without hitting freeze I can hit store and then store again and then it'll save my loop so when you're in that live image what it's going to do if you have an ECG attached is it's going to save that last heart rate cycle or however many heart rate cycles you have set up in the system setup which is in the system setup video later on but if I've just got it stored to save the last heart rate cycle I hit store it's showing me okay I've got the last heart rate cycle I can hit store and it's going to save that loop if I turn the ECG off and then I've got a live image and then I hit store if I play this cine loop you can't really tell but it is playing it shows right here that it is playing then I hit store it's going to save that entire cine loop not just a portion of it same thing with a live image I can hit store and then press store again and it's going to save that loop so that's what's called prospective saving so it's almost like working a VCR so if there's no ECG hooked up I can go ahead go with this live image press store and it's saving everything I see right now I press store again and it saved everything that I just watched in that live image hopefully that makes sense that is called prospective saving and so whether you have ECG on or off it will make a big difference as to how the ultrasound saves the images to your hard drive next we'll get into Doppler and M mode with the vivid eye